Hola. I've been on this stage five times in the last two years, and every time I get up here, I try to open with a joke, and every time my joke falls flat. I am not very good at telling jokes, so I'm just going to get right to it. We've been tasked today for the next 17 minutes to figure out what the future of marketing and advertising is. It's a very complex topic. There's a lot of feel-good things that you can talk about, but from where I'm standing, I'm a writer at Ad Age. I write about this stuff. There are a lot of problems in advertising today. There's a problem called ad fraud, where criminals are stealing ad dollars from brands right under their nose, and no one knows how big the problem is. Some experts say that ad fraud is going down to $6 billion, while others are saying it's going up to $16 billion. And there is no way, it is literally impossible, for anyone to figure out how much exactly is being lost. Now, that's a little surprising because digital advertising in the US saw $73 billion in ad revenue in 2016. Now, again, experts say that Google and Facebook are capturing 90 cents of every digital ad dollar spent. And on top of that, they're capturing 99% of all growth. Just like Rockefeller had a monopoly in the late 1800s, we're seeing a duopoly shake out right before our eyes with Google and Facebook. For many of you, there are startups here. How do you go up against someone who's capturing 99% of all growth? There are more problems. Brand safety. Brands literally cannot control where their ads appear. The Association of National Advertisers did not want to be on Breitbart, but just a few weeks ago, there was their ad on Breitbart. It is a serious problem. And again, with machine learning, AI, all these fancy buzzwords that we keep hearing, brands still can't control where their ads appear. Brand safety is a monster issue. We also have agencies who are under attack from consultancies who are seeking more growth. They, they want to grow more, so what are they doing? They're going after the ad dollars, and clients that were traditionally for the agencies are now going with the consultancies. The landscape is very radical. So we have 15 minutes to figure it out, everybody, and, and I hope we can uh, have a good discussion over here. And I just thought to kick things off, you know, anyone can grab this, but what do you guys think the future of advertising is? I mean, there's, I, I can start, there's, uh, there are three big things happening that I've been seeing here very clearly. One is a shift on the dollar, how the dollars are shifting from being 80% media to a more balanced uh, combination of media and, and production because, you know, what we, produ what we create is content and we have to, to, to compete against the, the, the time that consumers are spending with, with their favorite series, you know, it's not not just the, the other ads. So this is one big change. There's another big change that is happening that, that is how agencies are, are organized and how marketing departments are organized in terms of diversity. We need to figure that stuff out. You know, we don't represent the world anymore. We have to. Uh, and, um, and I think the third one is a matter of uh, footprints. We need to work, be more aware of, of the footprints and the, what happens, the side effects of the message that we're leaving. I, I kind of, a couple years ago, I'm the, on the board of the, of the Ad Council. We visited the White House, the previous White House, um, the one I like better. Uh, <laughs> and and the, the chief technology officer of the White House was talking about how she was tracking when, you know, because she had photo, showed a photo of, of the, the, some of the, the original engineers creating computers, and mostly women. And that's why the motherboard, for example, is called motherboard because it was created by a female engineer. And she said, this, I, I tracked the data to see when did it change to become mostly male. And it's like, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. And one day someone showed up with a, the packaging of a computer, a box of a personal computer. And when those personal computers were launched, they were launched as a toy for boys. And at that exact time, every kid that grew up from that generation forward, only the boys went to computer science school, not the girls. So what we do 
have a very important, leaves a very important footprint. The same way that factories need to worry about the, their carbon emissions, we need to worry about our ethical emissions as well. It's a very good point. Does anyone else want to touch on that? You know, you brought up diversity. Um, you know, Brian, you are CEO of HubSpot. You guys have seen tremendous growth. How do you see the future of advertising shaking out? Yeah, I, I look at it through, through a little bit of a different lens. When we started HubSpot, we actually didn't listen to what marketers wanted. We studied human behavior and how it was changing. And 11 years ago, people were moving en masse off of magazines and newspapers onto blogs and moving onto social media. And we basically started HubSpot with the idea of how do you create content and pull people in and match the way you market to the way people actually shop and buy. And there was sort of this discontinuous change in behavior that was happening 10 years ago. I feel like there's a similar change happening today to human behavior. And the way we all homo sapiens live our lives, like it used to be we read text all day, now we watch video all day. It used to be we clicked on organic ads, now you really can't do that, you have to click on paid ads. Uh, we used to be able to fill out forms, we don't fill out forms anymore, but we're willing to chat. Everything is getting turned upside down. We used to do a lot of email, now we're in Messenger. Human behavior seems to be shifting below our, below our feet. And today, there's a great opportunity for forward-looking marketers to transform the way they market to match that. And right now, this time of year is an interesting time of year because people are making their budgets. And if people talk about zero-based budgeting all the time, I talk about it at HubSpot, we actually don't do it. But in marketing, we do it because the, the buyer in the, in the shopping behavior has changed so much, we need to rethink budgeting. So you need to move as a marketer, budget from email to messaging, forms and landing pages to chat, organic SEO to paid SEO, PR to social. All those shifts need to happen. You need to rethink that budget from scratch so your resources are targeted at the modern buyer. Great time to be a forward-thinking marketer in my mind. You know, that, that's a really interesting point that you bring up that consumer habits are changing. I mean, I'll be honest, I cover digital advertising and I've seen great, great creatives. I've seen ads that are just absolutely brilliant. But most of the time, ads suck. And if, if you know, seeing so many ads, it's just not working in my opinion, the way it's currently set up. Now, Mark Pritchard, he is the CMO of Procter & Gamble. For those of you that don't know, Procter & Gamble is the biggest advertiser on the planet. They spend some $4 billion, $4 billion on advertising each year. And he brought up a point, you know, when you're talking about consumer habits and changing, that if I were to share a video with you right now, for example, is that the best time to see an ad for toothpaste? <laughs> you know, but, but that's what we're seeing. So what needs to change? Like, what is working right now that we could build on? For example, YouTube has six second ads, which I feel is a step in the right direction. But, you know, does anyone have any thoughts over there? Well, I think it's, it's ultimately putting the customer back at the center of it. And if you think, what is marketing? Advertising out to people, telling a story, conveying a product. And you could previously do that in a few places big campaign ideas, spend a lot of money, a lot of time on them, and it would get distributed out wide. You still have to have the big idea now, but you have to put it in lots of different places and all these fragmented audiences. I think where they go wrong is that they miss the big idea that consistently is told across all of it. And then it's about personalization at scale, the right content at the right time. So to your point, no, that probably isn't the right time. And what's happened is people have gone, oh, look, we need all this content for all these channels, and they just make it. And maybe thought doesn't go into making it and when is the right time to serve it. And so it's back to thinking about the consumer. When is going to be my right time to approach them? What is going to be that right creative to approach them with? Tell the same story across all the channels that you're marketing, but nuance it to the audience and the time and the channel. You know, you, you bring up a really good point because, you know, you talk about sending the right message at the right time. And I feel like with that also goes, there's an idea in advertising to make a million different creatives that are custom tailored to each individual and you want to send that at the right time. But at the same time, I feel like users are starting to feel a little creeped out by how much these brands know about them. So how, how do brands overcome that? How do brands, you know, not come off as creepy, 
but still deliver the right message at the right time. Who wants to tackle that one? I mean, the, from, from a creative standpoint, I think that the, it all starts with kind of finding what is that big, bold, the, the idea that changes what the product is. But more than anything is, is that we need to shift the, the we need to go beyond the, the traditional way of looking at ROI as the return on investment of money that the brand is putting on, the, on that, that idea to, to a dual ver look at that ROI as like this is the money that the clients or the, the brands are putting, but also the time that consumers are putting. So if we are going to spend three seconds with them, it needs to be three seconds that they are not going, want to, not going to want back. If it's six seconds or 30 seconds, it needs to be that. And, and, but you know, at the same time, you can't go much longer if you want to. We were talking backstage, you know, I was telling them about a project that we did for a client that ended up becoming a feature film. And he watched that movie, that, that movie and, and liked it and remembers it. So That's the, really whole, cool. the whole thing is how you have to get shorter is a fallacy, it's not, it's not true. We just need to be aware and be respectful of the time that we're taking so they don't want it back. So then if it's three seconds or one hour, it doesn't really matter. As long as they, they want it back, we're good. I, I think that's an excellent point because I've seen much longer forms of ads where, I mean, literally, I get choked up. Like, I, it, it's made me want to cry. There, there's just too many examples of that, but it's just finding the right place to expose me to that. That's the hurdle. Uh, when you're trying to do something like scale and, and reach a mass number of people, like, how do you... What do you do? Yeah. I, I think a lot of the people here are in startups. They're not big brands. And I think your success today in marketing, unlike your success a long time ago, your success is much more about the width of your brain than the width of your wallet. You don't actually need a lot of money to be successful in marketing today. If you're early on these new platforms, you can take advantage of them. Let's take ye old Twitter. We all have friends that get on Twitter in the first year. They have hundreds of thousands of followers, but their Twitter feed is awful. But they were early adopters on there and they got a lot of leverage. I think the big window that's opening for marketers today, that's gonna be open for a long time, but you wanna get in early, is around building a bot, okay? You want a bot on Messenger, a bot on Slack, a bot on all of the uh, messaging platforms, and you want chat run by a bot on your website. I think humans, all of us, are gonna get sick and tired of pointing and clicking and are just gonna be used to asking questions of bots and getting increasingly useful answers. I think less and less people will come to your website and navigate through your complicated site and go to your crappy search in your website and they'll just wanna chat and ask questions and get answers. I think there's a big shift in behavior that's about to happen. And I think all brands will need them, all startups will need them. As human behavior changes, you want to get on early. If you've got a great bot in your industry on Facebook Messenger, on Slack, you rise up in the rankings, and the next thing you know, people will be finding you through your bot, and there's a big shift going on. So if I were a startup, you can jump on older platforms like Google AdWords. The arbitrage opportunity is gone on AdWords. It's still there on Facebook. The new big one is going to be around bots, and you want a great bot and really invest in that technology to create unfair advantage over the next 10 years. I think there'll be a big agency opportunity there. There's this huge website design industry out there, giant, millions of companies doing website design. A new industry is about to form, in my opinion, around creating bots. Artificial intelligence is involved. The complicated artificial intelligence will be abstracted away from the designer. You have to put personality into it like your website. I think there's a really interesting time to be a marketer, particularly a startup marketer. I think you said the word bot 78 times during that. Um, no, I'm, but I'm getting you know, paid by the bot. Uh, but like, you know, just hearing a little bit of what you said, I, I actually don't want to interact with bots. I feel like they play a role, but I also want that human element. I mean, when I'm chatting with Amazon, for example, I ask, are, are you a human? Are you a real person? Because, I mean, let's face it, it's just like there's... There's this grand promise of artificial intelligence and AI, but when we look at the reality of what it is today, it's like, when's the best time to send an email? What's a good product recommendation? I mean, if I had to put a number on it, I would say we are on step two of 100 when I it comes too. to AI and bots, so. I just think that the slope of the curve in the website industry and the mobile app industry was like that. I think the slope of the curve on intelligence and quality you're not going to be able to tell the difference relatively quickly. It's just going to get better faster. Definitely. Well, let's just switch gears here for a second. Um, Google and Facebook, I mean, 
if anyone wants to argue with me that they are not a duopoly, I, I, I'd, I'd really welcome that challenge. But like, how are marketers, how are agencies, how are brands, they're beholden to Google and Facebook. I mean, in fairness, they have a lot of success because they work. They are very good at what they do. I'm not taking that away from them, but, you know, innovation is, is how, how can you compete with that? I mean, I'm sure there's probably some startups in here that want to tackle advertising with whatever product they have. How do you go up against someone like Google and Facebook? Like, if you were presented with that challenge, like, how do you even go about doing it? How do you disrupt that? And if anyone wants to touch on this, you know, is there a good argument to have a third major power join Google and Facebook as being an alternative to the duopoly? I mean, it's difficult. I, I'm not sure I'd like to go after trying to be that third one, but I think you gotta remember as well the opportunity that's come with it. I mean, especially in marketing, 10 years ago, the largest companies in the world had all the power. Because to advertise globally, you'd need multi-million pound budgets. Now anyone in a room here can start something and go and advertise. It's brought about so much opportunity. It's kind of democratized that advantage of marketing. And actually, almost to your point about adapting new things, it's given startups the advantage. It's put big brands at the disadvantage. Because startups are far more nimble to jump on these things. Yeah. And they're better at telling their story. Yeah. They're better at humanizing themselves as well and building audiences and communities. So you know, should there be a third? Probably at some point because it, it's, it's not good where it's at. But at the same time, it's created so much opportunity for so many more people. And you know, people in this room, yes, it gets competitive. Yes, the arbitrage comes up. But that wasn't possible 10 years ago. They just totally. wouldn't have had any opportunity yeah. to do it whatsoever. And I think that's a massive thing to, you know, I think it's good that we're always talking and pushing the boundary and talking about where the, you know, where has it gone too far? But we shouldn't forget all the opportunity that it's brought with it as well. Definitely. We have about one minute left, and I'm just going to quickly fire down the row over here. Um, what do you think, in, in a sentence, no more, what do you think the future of advertising is? Future advertising is half of it is going to go more automatic, and half is going to go more entertainment, more high level, just like fashion and food and, and other industries. Brian? Advertising is not going to go away, but it's going to get less and less effective as humans rely more and more on ad blocker software and DVRs, and they're on Netflix. It's just nearly impossible to reach humans using traditional or even new advertising techniques. You've got to be good at organic too. Totally. I think it will just it will go. It will become more consumer centric, and people will think more about the person they're trying to reach when they're trying to reach them and that will improve it and it will take away some of this some of this noise totally well i think that's all that we have for today thank you everyone for sticking around for the last conference <laughs>